Hello guys, it's Kasim. How you doing? Hope your week is going all right. Hope you're feeling all right. I hope you're feeling vibrant. I hope uh, your family's okay. Um, I hope things are getting better in your life. I really, really, I'm praying for you, and I hope things genuinely can, uh, you know, look up in your life. Anyways, um, welcome back again to the channel. I want to talk about something that I've been thinking about. So I've been thinking about how does it feel to be a man in 2022? Obviously, I'm a man, so I can speak about this conversation uh, very, very well. Um, and I, I just wrote down five things here that I, I wanted to share with you. I don't know whether they might give you some level of insight. You may be agreeing. You might be feeling the same way that I've been feeling. Um, but I hope in some way it adds value to the quality of your life. Um, but before I get into that, if you want to help me get to 1,000 subscribers by June, please can you like and subscribe to my channel. You would be an absolute legend. Thank you very, very, very much. Okay, cool, let's go. So the first thing that I wrote down here is that everything is your fault, right? Uh, so I think we're living in a world today where pretty much most men have feel as though everything is their fault, okay? If um, a marriage ends, it is no longer the responsibility of both of them as to why the marriage ended, the man is at fault. If the, children, if the children are misbehaving after a divorce and you're co-parenting, it must be the man's fault. Do you know what? Sexism is a re result of men. Women not feeling like can, they can walk on trains late at night is a result of men. The patriarchy is the issue. Do you know what? Mansplaining is a problem. Let me tell you what the problem is. The problem is that it's toxic masculinity. The also problem is it's not uh, the women's fault, the fact that there is a lot of women who are graduating from university and they can't find a partner. No, 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 that isn't their problem. The problem is it's men. It's men. There isn't enough men who are well educated to the same degree as women who are good men, who are six foot two, who are from a good family background, who are emotionally mature, who earn a good income, who have state stability, who own their own home, who have good amount of savings, who are spiritual as well, and who want a family. That isn't women's fault. The problem there is, it's men's fault. That's the problem with it, okay? Do you know what? The problem with politics isn't the fact that there are some people who get into politics regarding whether, regardless of whether they're men or women and they take advantage of their position. No, 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 no. The problem is it's men. Men are the problem. And in fact, if we had more women in those higher positions, even though women don't want to hold those kinds of positions because it means being highly, highly competitive, it means working sometimes 60, 70 hours every single week, on years on, on end. Um, it means having to uh, sacrifice friendships, having to sacrifice weekends, free time hobbies in order to do that. Even though that is the case, um, the problem is it's men. Men are the problem as to why there's not enough women in these political positions of power. Um, so as a man, that's how it feels. No matter what the issue is, men in one way or another, are to blame, right? The problems with knife crime are being caused by men. The problems with drugs, the problems with um, with children, mis young adults misbehaving. All of the problems in the world, in the UK, in Western civilization, are an attribute to men. They are the issue. Us men are the problems. And in fact, if men... A lot of people, I think a lot of women and a lot of people generally have the belief that if we could have women in loads of positions of power, everything would be sorted. There would be no more crime, there would be <coughs> less um, people abusing power, less corruption, like the world would be whole because women are so holy and women are so perfect that the world would be wonderful. Okay, All the problems in the world would be fixed. And that's how a lot of men feel. And so as a result, I do not have a say in anything. Because anything that I say as a man is either misogynistic, is toxic masculinity, it's aggressive, I'm not supporting feminism, I'm just, you know what, I'm too alpha, I'm too selfish. Basically, I can never get it perfect. 
nothing that I do, absolutely nothing that I can possibly do is, 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 is ever good enough, is ever acceptable enough. And even if, even if I'm a good man and I go into a relationship, guess what? I'm probably going to cheat anyway. I'm, in fact, if I'm a good man and I'm boring and I'm average man but I have a decent income, here's the problem. I'm not good looking. I'm not six foot two. I'm not as exciting. There is, I'm not as vibrant. So I think one of the issues of how it feels like to be a man in 2022 is you just can't win, okay? There is no way as a man that you can win. You're being, we're be, men are being attacked on every single angle from workplaces. Why are there not enough women in, in, in these different workplaces? Why are there not enough women in these positions? It's like insane. Right to the to the point where recently a survey came out, which was talking about how a lot of men feel as though they cannot be in the same room with a woman alone. Right, so when they have meetings, they have to have the meeting with the door open. Right, and the outrage with women, they were like, "Well, that's sexist and that's stupid and that's ridiculous," but that kind of tells you how much men feel attacked. Because today, I'm telling you, if you go into a room and you have a meeting with a woman and she comes out and she says you've done some kind of rage, um, uh, sexual harassment or something, your career is over. Social media will destroy you, will absolutely tear you apart, right? And they will automatically make the assumption that you are guilty as a man. They don't, they're not interested in seeing the facts. They don't care, okay? What they want to see is you prosecuted at all costs so that there's less one of you out there. Instead of, so this is what I wrote down here. Instead of individual individualism, we have uh, reverted to group identity, meaning that we attribute everything to the group, not as an individual. We no longer treat people as individual people, meaning if, um, if, if a man has been accused of rape, we don't say, do you know what, that particular man himself was perhaps not the best citizen, he was a bad man, right? We say men are rapists, right? Men are unsafe, they're all predators. And the issue with that is it, that obviously builds a certain ideology for you to, 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 to operate from, right? If you believe that all men are trash or all men are rapists, it means even if a good man or good men were around you, you'd still be suspicious of them. So... It's just something for you to think about if you're, and I don't know, maybe you've been feeling like that. The second thing that I wrote down here is that the world isn't balanced to make things equal for everyone. It is geared for the minorities. And, and I think most men can pretty much feel like this, where if you actually look at the problems that are, we're actually tackling as a society, we're not tackling problems to level out the playing field. We're just tackling certain aspects of, of areas where people can get into positions of power. They can have leverage over other people, right? We're not looking at the suicide rate of men. Like I was looking at um, uh, statistics about the amount of male shelters there are in the UK. In the UK, there's, I think, something in the region of about, I think it's just over 500 shelters. 11 of those cater to men and they only have, I think it was eight spaces. Eight spaces for men and then the others are for like people who are um, uh, transsexual and people of that persuasion. 500 spaces, 500 shelters and there's basically 11 spaces for men. Now where is, uh, bearing in mind that we know that men on average give or take so still experience the same level of kind of domestic abuse as women do what the hell is going on right we know that there are is areas in sciences and, and different areas where we don't have men men are not operating and we really need men to be in those areas we really need we really need women to go in certain areas but the issue is we're not fighting for that what about um a divorce when people are getting divorced, why is it that nine times out of ten, the woman gets full custody of the kids and not the man? Right? What's going on? Like, why isn't it 50-50 most of the time? And it just isn't like that, right? Uh, when men get divorced, even though women are earning way more than men are at the moment, why is it that when people get divorced, nine times out of ten, it is men who are paying for 
uh, 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 child maintenance, child support, or it's men who have to give up the most amount of money in a divorce. Half of everything that they own. Why isn't the woman giving up half of everything? It's just something like, and I, I feel like this is the way he's going. But the world isn't geared to try and help everybody. The world is geared to try and help a certain type of person, right? It's like I say to women, uh, black women all the time, you think this whole feminist movement was designed for black people? No, the feminist movement was designed for white women, middle class white women who wanted to get ahead but struggled because of the way structure of life was. If women were truly for feminism and were fighting for women's rights, why is it that black women did not get the, the voting right until after white women had got it? If truly they were for feminism. I mean, you have to think about this kind of stuff. And a lot of people just don't want to. They don't even want to have the conversation. They don't want to talk about it, Cass. No, that's too. No, 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 no. And so I feel as though a lot of men, we've clocked out because everything is just about women. It's about putting women on a pedestal. It's about women winning. Like, there's nothing for men. There's no. If I remember, uh, I was reading something where all of these men activist group were being attacked by women saying that we, why would you have a men's activism group why would you have a, 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 a group which is fighting for men's rights what do men have to be afraid of right which kind of gives you a sense as to the belief system that a lot of women have a lot of women don't think that men have problems that uh, the suicide rate the amount of men in prisons right who are innocent but they've been convicted of being in prison the amount of men who a woman has said it's been raped but the court has believed the woman uh, but there has been no evidence and the man is actually innocent like I could go on and on and on and the issue is no one's looking at it no one cares it's just something to think about <coughs> the third thing that I wrote down here is I think for a lot of men it feels like wise women are silent and it's true because if you look at social media and you look at um, the voices that are, are coming forward about feminism, about women's rights, about family, about, um, about religion, about politics, most of the people who hold the views who we see on television don't um, represent the majority of women. They don't represent the, mo the majority of society. Right? These are extremist views. These are really sort of far left views or far right views. And they don't represent the majority of women. And the issue is, uh, a lot of pe women who are wise, okay, women who want understand the, the institution of family, who understand hard work, who um, understand about privacy, these women don't have time to be going on television and talking absolute nonsense, going on podcasts. They have their families, they have their children, they have their husbands. They've got stuff within the community that they're involved in than to go on freaking podcasts and talk absolute nonsense. They don't have time for that crap. And so the issue that you have is that the, with the young girls who are coming through and the young men are consuming content from women who really don't represent the, the majority of women. Like the majority of women I know are not feminists. They don't believe in feminism. Most women that I know want families. They want to get married. They don't want a man who is up earning millions. They just want a man who has a decent income, right? They want a man who's a good man. And here's the issue. If you go on YouTube and you listen to what women want, on YouTube, the majority of women saying they want a really rich man, a man who's like six foot four, who has got really uh, like heavily built, who is uh, uh, in a, in a, in, with a really high net income, an amazing job. Like, it's just, most men aren't like that. <laughs> they just aren't. So, um, and a lot of women obviously recognize that because a lot of women are wise in their thinking. And so I, I just think that it feels to me as a man that a lot of women who genuinely represent what women are as a whole, they're just not coming forward. They're just not saying anything. And... So and uh, and so all of these women who are representing a very small minority are the ones who are shining through. So that's just something for me. The fourth thing that I wrote down here is a frustration, anger, indifference. Um, I think a lot of men are clocking out. Uh, I think a lot of men are angry. 
I think a lot of men are frustrated. I think a lot of men are, are becoming indifferent. Nihilism. Don't care. Don't give a shit. Let women do whatever they want. Let women, if women say that they don't need men, fine, right? And I think the, because of, of the amount of stuff that men can get today to satisfy many of their needs, men don't really particularly need women. Do you know what I mean? So, for example, today uh, you can get yourself a fake women's parts, right? You can go and buy that on the internet. It can be dis delivered to you in a private, discreet uh, box and... Basically, as a man, go ahead. You can find your, you can get like stuff, porn and stuff like that. You can find it on the internet. Like uh, money, like meaning that today we're living in a world where I'm seeing a lot of men. Basically, all they do is go to work, come home, and that's pretty much it, right? Everything that they need, community, uh, they can get friends on COD. Like their entire world can be done in a space of their home. They don't have to go anywhere anymore. And the issue, obviously, that you have with this is there's still a lot of needs that men have that are not being met. Com camaraderie, right? Touch. All of these things that men need, but they're not getting because they're clocking out. They just don't want to deal with the nonsense. Men, like, I hear a lot of men say, Cash, I just want to get my job done. I don't want to get involved in trans stuff. I don't want to get involved in female politics. I don't want to do it. I want to go to work, I want to do my job, and I want to go home. Th that's literally all I want to do. But the issue is, politics and, and, and workplace politics are dragging them into things that they don't want to be involved in. Um, and so they're just cocking out. Like that's you, you guys have seen the data on the amount of men who are refusing to go back to work. There's a lot of men who refuse. They don't want to go back into the office. They don't want to. They want to work from home. Because they've been doing it for the last two years, it's proven that they can get the same results. So they don't want to go back into the office. They want to work from home. Maybe go in one day a week. Right? And then stay at home. They don't have to do with drama. They don't have to do with the nonsense. They can be at home. All meetings are virtual online. Done. This half an hour meeting. Boom, boom, boom. Done. Off I go. And that's how a lot of men are feeling from what I'm seeing. Um... And I don't know whether you agree with that or you disagree, but I'm just seeing a lot of guys clocking out. Um, it's very interesting. Um, the last thing that I wrote down here is that men are lost. No pride as not needed. You know, there was a, a, a certain pride that men had about looking after themselves, about protecting women, about being pillars of, commu of the community, about looking after their neighbor, don't need it anymore, right? Because a lot of the discipline that men had was because they wanted to protect their family, was because they wanted to protect the reputation of the family. But there is no family anymore. The institution of family is being destroyed because women don't want to be entrapped in a relationship which they're unhappy with. 80%, since the 1960s, 70 to 80% of all marriages have been fought for by the woman. Therefore, the majority of people who are unhappy with the way things are are women in, in in marriages anyway so there are more women divorcing and coming out of relationships and not wanting to be in a relationship than there are men men as you are hearing these statistics don't simply ask for a divorce right and obviously that uh, why is a multivaried varied answer there's multiple reasons um, one of which is that men have more to lose usually than women do um, but my point being is that there is no pride to take as a man anymore Men feel as though they're not actually needed. And as a result, it's leading for a lot of men to feel lost. Because one of the needs that we have as a human being is drive. We need to feel like we have a purpose, like our life means something. That's what makes human beings different to all the other species on the planet, right? We have this innate drive to want to be of service. What can I do for you? Here's the issue. We don't no longer need that. Sorry. The world is making us feel as we no longer need or they has a need for that kind of man who is a pillar of the community who looks after people who protects people right because you've got to remember half of the people who live on this planet are women but if you look at social media if you look at the way everything is being portrayed men are the problems to everything so why <coughs> and if men are the problems to everything why don't women just get rid of them and then they have one less problem on their hands so 
that's what I'm seeing a lot of. And I'm just seeing a lot of men, they just don't take pride. They don't look after themselves. They don't go to the gym. They don't shave often. They don't wear nice clothing. Like If you go back to, through history, like men used to dress really nice in nice suits, like, like a meal was like a big event. Not anymore. People just go out to Nando's, whatever. It doesn't matter, man. Just wear Crocs or whatever. People don't, the guys just don't take pride in themselves anymore. Um, so, I don't know whether you found that useful or not, but it's just something that I was thinking about. What do you think? I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Comment below, send me a message. Um, also, if you want to support me, get to a thousand subscribers by June. Please like and subscribe to my channel. You will be an absolute legend. Um, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And I will speak to you very soon. See you later. Bye for now.